So sorry about that. So I just wanted to welcome everyone to the Seaver Autism Center's Caregiver Webinar Series. Um, and again, we are very lucky today to have Aliza Greenberg and Andrew Procopio from the Learning Springs School uh, to share ideas uh, of how to keep our kids busy and keep our sanity. Um, so just a few housekeeping um, points. The first is if you wish to remain totally anonymous during today's uh, webinar, uh, we ask that you keep your video off. You can also edit the name that appears in your Zoom box by clicking the three dots on the top uh, corner of your box and you can kind of just put a letter in um, or a nickname. Something to be mindful of, these slides will be posted on our website probably by the end of next week. Um, so don't worry if you don't catch a website, uh, the resources will be there. Um, this is our 13th webinar. So the past 12 webinars that we've hosted, uh, whether it's on using visual schedules, organizing a workspace, uh, wearing masks, utilizing social stories, um, all of those previous slides are also on our website. We are going to ask that you use the chat feature to ask any questions that you have for any of our panelists. Um, and we are also going to ask that if you have ideas for future webinars, please also share those in the chat feature. So we understand that it is a challenging time for everybody, especially a challenging time for those that are at home with an individual who is used to getting a lot of services and supports and now is not getting those same services. Um, and we wanna make sure that what we're covering is relevant and useful. And the way that we do that is by getting your input. Um, so please kind of use the chat feature for both questions as well as future ideas. Um, and without further ado, I turn it over to Aliza and Andrea from the Learning Spring School. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so I'm Aliza Greenberg. I'm the Arts Enrichment Coordinator at the Learning Springs School. So I teach um, K through eight uh, arts for um, all our students at the school. And um, I'm also uh, the project leader for supporting transitions with the Museum Arts and Culture Access Consortium. Um, and I'll let Andrea introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm an occupational therapist at the Learning Springs School. Um, I also work with children privately through um, my private practice called A Well-Fed Mind, where I use a holistic approach combining traditional OT with lifestyle and nutritional coaching. Um, I'm so happy to be here and I hope our presentation sparks inspiration for new ideas using items that you may already have at home. So, um, so in sharing all these ideas, we kind of did a onslaught of ideas and tips, um, but we really encourage you to think about what your child enjoys and what your child might struggle with. And um, if, for example, if using imagination is really hard, go with a more concrete task that's making a specific picture using um, collage instead of a more open prompt. So really think about um, maybe the materials that your child is comfortable with and enjoys. Um, and don't be afraid to Google any of these ideas to get more step-by-step -step instructions. Um, there are a lot of resources on the internet and we um, gathered a lot of these pictures from the internet. So um, there's information out there if you need a more detailed um, description. Um, so definitely adapting to your child's interests is going to help them stay engaged. So um, thinking about how these activities might be adapted, for example, if your child's really into airplanes or really into Sonic, um, how can these activities be tailored to their interests so they can be more engaged and more independent. Um, using a theme of the week can be really helpful, um, whether it's a 
a country to explore or um, a topic that's really interesting um, can be helpful just to, to keep children engaged over a longer period of time. Um, thinking about what you have at home, um, using household objects, um, you know, I don't, we don't want anyone to spend a lot of money during this time um, or any time. Um, we want these to be activities that are really accessible for all. Um, so to that end, uh, saving recycled materials can really be helpful. So I know for me, anytime I finish a paper towel roll, I save it. Anytime I open a box, I save it. Um, just, my apartment's a bit full of uh, materials, but it really comes in handy when I need things to use for different activities. And then um, I'm putting on my OT hat and I, when I was contributing to this and keeping a, a work or PlayStation organized. So setting it up with designated labels or designated spots for scissors, um, labeling boxes um, for different materials, you know, with maybe like a cup that's filled with ripped pieces of paper or beads, kind of just setting up a workstation so that everything is there. Everything is, you know, that you, it's kind of like grab and go. And also to eliminate distractions, um, just to make things easier. Um, another thing too is to try using a visual schedule with choices. So make, that makes the expectation clear and it provides your child with a sense of autonomy, especially if you're giving them two choices of things that they really, really enjoy. Um, another tip too is using a timer. So this also makes the, the activity more structured and predictable. Um, of course, incorporating your child into household tasks. So children like to be independent and feel like they're part of what you're doing. So um, I'm going to get into this a little bit later, but just thinking of ways that you can break down tasks, like if you're doing, um, you know, a cooking activity or you're cooking, you're just cooking at home for dinner, kind of deciding what part of that your child can be involved in. Um, another thing is loose parts can really spark imagination. So thinking about things that you can find around the house, like beads or buttons, and putting them, or even like loose screws. Um, kids love to put things together, so keeping that those around are really, really good too. Um, also, mixing free play with structured time. So thinking about that. So structure is awesome in keeping children engaged, but also kind of reading your child if they're having an off day. Maybe they might need more free time just kind of chill out time, which is also good because it helps to um, helps them to use their own imagination. And another thing I wanted to mention is thinking about their skill level. So a lot of these activities, they can look a little complex, but there's always ways to downgrade it or upgrade it. So thinking about where they are, because that can really play a role in their, their regulation. So if something's too easy, they might get bored and walk away or if something's too hard, then you might see like a behavior, getting frustrated, throwing a tantrum. So it's really all about finding that just right challenge to help keeping them engaged and keep their attention. Yeah, and we hope that like doing some easy things to set up from the beginning will help them be more independent so that you can get your battery from zero to recharge and, and make sure that you're feeling um, recharged and good as well. Um, so yeah, we can go to the next slide. So um, one idea is thinking about easy puppets that you can make out of things around your household. Um, there's a picture of, you know, shapes pasted on a spoon to make a character. Um, eyes, uh, putting eyes on anything makes it a really fun puppet. So eyes on paper towel tubes or toilet paper tubes, eyes on instruments. Um, there's also the good old sock puppet. Um, so you can definitely draw a bunch of eyes and I think kids could have a lot of fun making different shapes of eyes and different, um, you know, glasses, no glasses, um, all those different things. And, or you could order sticker eyes. Um, and a good extension activity, if, if 
kids are finding this really exciting is you could use these puppets to write plays and and you know if if your child's at that point where they can really engage in some um some creative play and playwriting they could write plays using the puppets for the family to perform later when you had your when you've had your time to get things done during the day Um, so the next slide shows um, building with recycled materials. There's so much, I think these like open tasks are really great because there's so many things that can be extended and built upon and they really are creating a new play space for the children. So instead of, um, you know, having toys that are already pre-made, there's a lot of time spent um, to build different cities um, using boxes and different materials, car tracks. Um, there's a, a mansion out of shoe boxes, um, different giant cities to play in. So it not only um, occupies the children while they're building the things, but then they can play as well um, and get that those skills that they'll be learning from imaginative play. And, Definitely save everything. That's my, my biggest advice. Bubble wrap, toilet paper tubes, bottles. It's all materials that can be used to, to build things. Um, so on the next slide, we have um, some collage making. And again, this is where you can think about if your child is more inclined to kind of more concrete, prompts, so the rainbow, for example, using ripped pieces of paper, if each of the color, they could rip up the different colors and sort them into cups, which Andrea will talk a lot about sorting later, um, they could rip up those different colors and sort them, and, and then it's a really concrete picture to make. Or they could get creative and have a more open prompt where um, they're, you know, creating collage from whatever image they want to make. Um, but it's a really great activity, um, both creating the different shapes and pieces and also then gluing them on to make the picture. Um, aluminum foil art, very fun, um, multi-sensory activity. Um, so a couple different options. There's a piece of cardboard with, um, you can, with put pipe cleaners or string or cut up rubber bands um, under on the cardboard to make a picture and then you wrap the tin foil around it so that it creates like a bumpy um, texture and then um, either sharpies or there's really great um, paint sticks called wick sticks and they're really clean the child on the left is using the wick sticks and they are paint so they come out nice and bright and but they're very, very clean um, and easy to use. So I'm a big fan of those. Um, and there's also painting on tin foil, which can be a great sensory activity using Q-tips or paint brushes. Um, and then uh, there's also creating sculptures out of aluminum foil or jewelry. <laughs> um, drawing or coloring to music. So I put a, I, love the Silk Road Ensemble as an option for like good wordless music where each of their songs kind of have like different new moods um so putting on those that different styles of music and um having the you know they could color at a table or there's really fun big ways to color that get um some energy out either lying on the floor and coloring on the wall or um uh, lying on the floor and on your stomach and um, my recommendation is to just put a some painters tape around so that there's a border so that a lot of um, pencil or crayon doesn't get all over the floor or wall outside of the paper um, but having that tape border is helpful um, and I recommend also getting kind of like a if you're gonna be home for a while it's good to have a big roll of craft paper around so that it's easy to kind of just rip off and give paper to, to kids so that um, they can work in different sizes and work big and small. Um, 
So we suggest making maybe a messy play area and a bathtub is a great um, area to do that. Um, so things that are really fun are making slime. Um, this is my favorite slime recipe, super easy. And once the slime is made, then they can, you know, play with it at different times um, during the day. Um, cooking some noodles, you can dye the noodles or not, but cooked spaghetti is a really great sensory activity. Um, playing with shaving cream on bubble wrap. And I love these um, bubble snake blowers, which is just taking a bottle, cutting the bottom off putting a sock on it and then dipping it in soapy water. And you can blow and the bubbles come out really long and kids really love that. Um, so the next um, slide is sort of making games out of different household items and objects. Um, so on the right hand side, there's some marble games using paper plates, um, either a spiral and with a tube. Um, the one that has little papers sticking up, I love because it's a game where you can have to get the marbles through the tubes. They can create all different obstacles on the plate um, and then spend however much time, you know, playing, playing the game that they created. Um, and then there's another marble run. And then I'll, um, oh, and we also suggest like making um, some preferred pictures into puzzles. So if a, a child really likes um, Mario, you could get a picture of Mario and cut it up into smaller pieces and they could um, put those together like a puzzle. Um, and uh, putting magnets on the back, you could do it on the refrigerator as well and kind of slide them around or as Andrea will show you later on a big cookie sheet as well. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to Andrea to continue. Sure. So before we move on to the next slide, I just wanted to go back to um, there's one game that I really it's one of my favorite games. Um, go to the the making puzzles and games slide. Yeah. So the picture on the left is a DIY version of the game Kerplunk, which so many kids love. And it's really, really easy to make. All you need is a water bottle some skewers and marbles. And so basically this is a game that takes a lot of time and effort to, to play where the child is putting in um, the sticks into the holes and that takes a while and then picking up the marbles and putting them in one by one. And then their favorite part is to pull them out and watch all the, the marbles fall. So that's a really easy, fun game that you can do. You can make together. Um, but that's something I wanted to point out because it's one of my favorite games. All right, so moving on, these are, um, I, I picked some things that, that are easily found around the house because you'd be surprised of how many kitchen items that you could use to turn into therapy or I have my therapy hat on, but it doesn't have to be therapy related. You know, you're, you, you can do these for fun. Um, but so a cookie sheet, is magnetic so you can use magnets you can write words build um, practice writing letters um, you can even get magnetic numbers and, and practice working on your phone number your address there's just so many things that you can do um, and then i love this game the cotton ball soccer so you just need a cotton ball and a straw but if you want to get fancy you can make your own soccer field um, kids love this. It's super fun. It's a great oral motor game. Then we have Bubble Mountain, which is also a really huge hit. It can get a little messy, but it's really, really fun. Um, it's the picture in the, the middle with the three colors of it's dish soap and water and you can add food dye and you just need a straw and you, you, you put the straw in and you blow and the bubbles get really, really big and, the, and kids love it. It's also super regulating. It's really calming. So it's a really good kind of cool down activity too. Um, and next you'll see a picture of a child using a turkey baster and bowls of water. So it's really simple. You just have two bowls of water, a turkey baster, you're squeezing it. It's really good for strengthening, good for dexterity. Um, it's also really fun and simple. 
and then we have Swiffer Shuffleboard. So you really just need a Swiffer if you have one of those at home, um, some painter's tape and a ball or like a little hockey puck. So just really getting creative and using things that you already have at home, but in a completely different way. Um, next slide, we have activities that you can do with straws or toothpicks. So here's a picture of a colander. You can stick colorful straws um, or you can use uh, pipe cleaners. It's also another, um, I think we're on different slides. <laughs> the toothpick slide. It might, oh, I think, I'm sorry, I think it got switched. Okay, All the, so we're on sponges. So I love sponges. There's so many things that you can do with sponges. Um, you can use them to just like, you know, dipping into water and squeezing into another container. It sounds super simple, but it's, it's really fun. It's a great sensory experience. And it's really also very regulating. Um, you can also cut up sponges into small cubes. You can either use it to dip into paint, um, to write, you know, dip, make different um, pictures, or you can use clothespins or tongs to, to make it more challenging to work, also work on those fine motor skills. So, so many different things. You can go and get a pack of sponges from the dollar store, cut them up into different shapes. Um, it can really be awesome and fun. Okay, next slide. And lacing. So I love lacing. Um, super easy. You can get yarn or string. You can make different jewelry. You can also use a paper plate and a hole puncher and cut holes in the, in the top and make hair. And then also your build a face. So really, really fun, really easy. Um, you can take cardboard and cut out different shapes and do lacing with that. Really, really creative. You can get, um, if you see on the, the top left, there's a picture of a toilet paper roll and straws. So kind of a, a wide range of skill level, but really, really fun, really easy. Scavenger hunts. I love scavenger hunts because they're a huge hit. You can really customize them if you're going with the theme of the week or maybe you've read a book recently and your kids are really into it and you might want to go through the book and maybe try to find things from the book. Um, you know, going on a bear hunt. That's a really good fun book. Um, really just you can customize these. You can do them inside, you can go outside for a nature scavenger hunt. It works on so many different things. It's really great for executive functioning skills like memory, organization, problem solving, and visual scanning skills, and they take a long time. So it's a really fun thing that can really keep your children engaged that doesn't cost any money. And job of the day. So I'm always thinking about independence and ways to build autonomy. And I'm sure that your children are seeing you do your day-to-day -day tasks at home and they want to be involved. So this is a really great opportunity to work on different skills and also keeping them entertained. So maybe on the visual schedule of the day, you might want to put a special job like paper shredder. So just taking junk mail or um, pieces of scrap paper and ripping them up, shredding it. That's a really great fine motor um, activity, but also it's fun, ripping paper. It feels like rebellious, like I'm ripping paper. Like this is, it's fun, it keeps them engaged. Um, you could also be a kitchen helper. So putting away utensils, that's a great sorting activity. Putting away groceries, um, it's a, another great sorting activity, but it's also heavy work. So it's really good, it's really regulating. Um, and it's fun. They like kids like to be involved. They like to feel important, like they're they're doing, um, you know, that they're part of your. They're like your little helper. So, um, making them making it sound really important and praising them is really key. And for outdoor fun, 
So these are some of my favorite summer activities. I love these nature walk bracelets. It's, they're made from toilet paper rolls and tape, that's it. So you can kind of make it so that it cuffs on around their wrist. You're going for a walk, you're picking flowers, you're picking grass, and then by the end of the walk, you have a beautiful bracelet. Next we have spray painting, which is, you can hang up an old sheet, fill up a spray bottle with some water, some food dye or some paint, shake it up, and there you go, you have spray painting, and depending on how big your sheet is, this could take a really long time, keep them engaged, kids love it. Um, and next is ice painting. I love ice painting, it's a great sensory activity. Um, you just fill up an ice cube tray with some water and paint and stick in a popsicle stick and there you go. You have a really fun, something different. Kids love it. It's great. It's easy using things you have at home. And last but not least, my favorite is obstacle courses, um, building forts and doing ex wall exercises. So um, I think that Building a fort works on so many different things. You can do it on rainy days, maybe on days like when it's too hot, like today. Um, your kids love to build forts and be inside things. So finding blankets and pillows, making it really, really cool. Um, it changes the entire room, sparks such great imagine, imaginative play. Um, and it's really easy. You're using things that you have. Also, if you want to add the challenge, you can have the child involved and they can plan it and create it themselves. Um, using streamers across the wall with painter's tape is really fun to go inside, under, over, crawling on their belly, works on so many great things. Um, and then the picture on the right, uh, we actually do this at Learning Spring. We put painter's tape on the floor in the hallway. Kids love it. Um, it's easy. You can, you can change it. You can make one different every day. Um, super easy you just do zigzags walk across and it's fun and all you need is painter's tape so yeah i hope that these activities were helpful um andrea i'm actually just going to share we we missed a few in the slides so i'm going to share my screen so that you can um share those ones that we missed okay yeah All right, let me just go back. Great, so this is one of them. Oh, yes. Um, okay, so this is, these are activities that you can use using um, toothpicks and straws. So the first one is a colander um, with straws and just putting them into the holes. It's a great fun motor activity. It takes a long time. It's really organizing. Um, and then we have a spice container, an empty spice container and toothpicks. So putting the toothpicks in the, in the little holes where the spices go um, is also a great fine motor task and it's very, very organizing too. Then another thing that's really, really fun and you can do, you can make this very simple or you can do it very complex is the marshmallow sculptures. So just with marshmallows and toothpicks, you can build different shapes. You can try to build houses. You can build a pyramid. You can do something really complex like this picture. And another really great thing I like to do is um, use Play-Doh or putty if you have putty and make it flat and put straws inside just like the picture on the bottom and then sticking the toothpicks into the straw. So that's another great easy, fun activity to do at home. Oh yes, and sorting. So sorting is, is really fun and very organizing. Um, it takes a long time. So I, I love these activities, they're very simple. The first one is just clothespins, pom-poms, and cupcake liners. So you can have a whole pile of different color pom-poms and then having your child pick them up um, with or without the clothespin, 
um, and then putting them into the different, matching the different colors to the cupcake liner. Then next we have oatmeal, empty oatmeal containers with just like a, a hole cut with, you're using playing cards. So just matching the suit and putting them into the different container is a fun, easy activity. And of course, stickers. Stickers are awesome. You can get a whole bunch of stickers at the dollar store and you can match colors, you can match by shape. Really, really fun. Putting it on the wall works on so many different things. I'm, of course, I'm thinking from an OT mind, but it's really great, it's really engaging, but it's also great for working on strength because if they're putting stickers on a wall, you're working on your shoulder strength, stability, dexterity, picking off the, peeling off the stickers, just so many great things. And my favorite, sensory bins. So you can make a sensory bin with so many different things. So here, the first one is finding fossils in cornmeal. So you can hide different things inside. Um, you can also make a sensory bin based on the theme of the week if you were gonna do something like that. The next, the second sensory bin is water beads, which are such a big hit. Kids love water beads. You can hide so many different things and, and you can use different objects. Really fun. Then the next one is just corn kernels. Then we have pasta that's dyed, which is really, really fun. Then the bottom middle is just beans, different assorted beans. And the last one is rice. So really you can get creative. Went through that. Yeah. I think that was every. I think that was it, yeah. I don't know, my, my slides are all different. So, um, so we'll just uh, share also some uh, resources that um, are, can be really helpful. Um, the, our cultural organizations have a lot of resources out there. Um, I, what, these are some that I really love. Um, Sketch with Jeff at the Guggenheim Museum. It, he has online videos and live teaching if um, you wanted to tune into a live session. Um, but he leads uh, drawing activities for all ages um, and they're really engaging and fun. Um, and he uses a lot of like animation and um, breaks it down really easily. Um, the New Victory Theater has arts breaks, um, which are, there's so many different topics. There's um, circus and puppetry and um, dance and acting and just a lot of different videos to help um, children engage in the arts. Um, there's the American Ballet Theater's Kids site, and these have online activities and informational videos each week. Um, there's Adventure Theater Live, and they're actually doing live shows. So if your child likes to go to the theater, um, this is a way to attend the theater from home. Um, they're all, all the shows are on Zoom and they are um, really interactive, engaging shows, um, each one with a different adventure theme. Um, the Museum Arts and Culture Access Consortium also has um, a page for at-home activities, which I'm sure Michelle um, probably told this group about, um, but it's at macaccess.org, and there's a listing of all different um, virtual resources from our different um, cultural organizations. Um, and then we really encourage uh, people to search Pinterest um, for different craft ideas. Pinterest is a really great resource. Um, I didn't really know about it until I became a teacher. And it has just, just seeing a picture of a project can be really helpful um, in helping think about creative ways to engage. Um, so that is all. This is our, our contact information here. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that Perfect. 
Okay. Um, Did mine go away? <laughs> I think we're good though. Okay. Um, so thank you guys. That was so helpful. I definitely have new activities to try at home with my kids. Um, so just a few more resources that we've kind of gotten. Um, definitely check out Mac's website that has tons of the cultural organizations and their offerings. One thing I've been encouraging families to um, utilize right now is kind of virtual tours. So I guess the silver lining of right now is cultural organizations around the world have really started putting more content online. And there are a lot of virtual tours. And this is something if your child does have a very specialized interest, you probably can now find a virtual tour relevant to that interest. Um, so if they really like animals, the San Diego Zoo, the Cincinnati Zoo are doing a lot of virtual programs. Um, I believe at the Cincinnati Zoo at three o'clock, they do uh, feeding times or kind of live uh, cameras. Uh, if your child really enjoys art or has a uh, um, fascination with France, uh, the Louvre has put a lot of online programming um, besides the Museum and Arts uh, and Access Cultural uh, Mac, uh, Google Arts and Culture. Um, Google has also built up an online gallery of like 2,500 museums and you can explore different masterpieces or take tours. If your child is interested in space, NASA Live has a lot of content. Um, so this list is definitely not exhaustive. It's just a sampling of what is available. Um, but if your child is into dinosaurs or the transit system, um, you could definitely find online tours or content. I know Disney has, I don't know if it's through Disney, but you can go on some of the, the rides at Disney uh, virtually. Um, so it's definitely something that you could do as a family, but it's also something if your child does have an interest that you can kind of show them some of these resources and let them play around. Um, some things that we've been encouraging families to do is kind of getting some movement. Um, so if it's possible, going outside on those nature walks is great. If for whatever reason you're not able to go outside in a safe way um, because of social distancing or if it's too hot out, there are definitely some great apps and resources. Um, Cosmic Kids Yoga has a app, but I also recommend parents can go through YouTube and you can find free uh, yoga activities. They have different ones based on themes. So if you have a child who's very interested in Disney, they have um, frozen yoga, like yoga that's a, a frozen theme. Um, they have Halloween theme yogas. Um, so they kind of have exercises that are five minutes and exercises that are 20 minutes, depending on your child's attention span and kind of their ability to sit and attend. Go Noodle is a fabulous app. Um, they also are on YouTube. They have a channel if you have a smart TV. Um, they have different ways to engage kids. I know a lot of schools use it. Um, again, really great way that if you do need to have your child on a screen while you have a call or need a chance to do something, you can feel good about the programming that they're getting. Uh, a new thing that I recently learned of is something called Exercise Buddy. It's an app available on tablets, which can help increase physical activity. And it's really exercise designed for individuals who learn differently. And right now they're offering debatable. I saw on the website a 14 day free trial. I know on the Autism Speaks website, they said right now they're offering a three month uh, free trial during COVID, but I'm not positive about that. So, um, but that is also something to keep kids engaged and moving. Some just additional websites that I use, Autism Speaks has a virtual summer activities where they have a lot of the things that we talked about, plus additional resources. Little Bins for Little Hands is a great website um, that has some of these activities and more. Um, Pathfinders for Autism also has a list of home activities. So these are just some 
additional websites if some of these activities piqued your interest and your child is engaging them and you want to kind of continue um, to do some of the sensory messy play um, at home. So now I want to open it up to any questions that you might have. Um, so again, if you want to use that chat feature, um, I know a parent did um, email us a question. I think it's probably more for Andrea. Um, how can I help my child to stop chewing on books and games? Um, that's a good question. I would say it's hard for me to really, you know, say that if I don't know the child, but um, I would say offering other materials that are safer, you know, to chew on. There's chewies. Um, there's so many different chewies uh, you can get off of Amazon. Um, I can, you know, I can send you my favorite ones, um, but there's all different ones. So I would definitely say that it sounds like maybe her child is seeking that oral input, and, you know, but trying to find ways to give it in a more you know, functional or uh, safer way is, is the best bet. Um, but there's so many different things, yeah, I would say. You can even offer different, um, if you wanna do like the food route, you can offer the like, chewy types of food, like Twizzlers or, um, there's a lot of different things. But if you want more of like something to have, I would say um, a chewy is the way to go. But I can also send, send some resources as a follow-up if that's something that would be interested. And I think a big theme for all of our webinars has really been to use your child's um, team to help answer specific questions for your child. So whether that's contacting the school or their OT or their speech therapist or the school counselor, um, because they're obviously in a better position to know your child and kind of know maybe what was working for them in their class or program. Yeah, it's definitely hard to, to recommend something very specific to a child, so yeah. Any other questions uh, that people have in terms of maybe activities that they've tried that have not been successful or other ways to kind of use uh, objects at home to engage your children? So I know some people have asked for my contact information or everybody's contact information. So I'm gonna just ask all the presenters to add their contact information into the chat. Um, so a few things, something somebody asked, and I think a lot of parents of teens can relate, any ideas of activities for teenagers to get them off of their tablets and technology in order to engage them? I think, again, um, really thinking about what their interest is. Um, I, I work with a few teenagers and who don't really enjoy physical activity, so it's always a challenge to find something that um, they love. But I know this is sort of using technology, but on YouTube I found a ton of different um, like different channels that are really geared to our interests. So I found a Harry Potter exercise routine. I've found like a Roblox um, exercise routine. So you're still using the technology and technically it's screen time, but if you're getting physical activity out of it, I almost feel like it's worth it. It's sort of like the trade-off. Um, but that's a hard one because screens are, you know, part of our life now and we're on it all day long and it's a little bit of a little addicting. So that's always going to be a challenge, I think, really for teenagers, especially is seeing what their interests are. So if it's video games, maybe, you know, there's, there's Super Mario uh, 
exercise routines on YouTube. So I hope that's helpful. I know that's not the best answer to use technology to get away from screens, but. I think also, um, I mean, the arts can be really helpful. It's um, and incorporating a social component can be really helpful. So if there's um, a family that you can kind of like connect with, um, you can, they can, you know, use some off screen time to create something and then share it with um, a friend that would have to probably be on screen, but using that off screen time um, to create something, whether it's like a script or a play that they're going to read together or a dance routine that they could teach each other, um, but using some off screen time, but being motivated by that social on screen time can be um, helpful as well. Yeah, and I, I think also using some behavioral strategies like setting time limits or using screens as more of a reinforcer um, could be a way to kind of manage the screen time. But again, it's so challenging because kids are now being asked to do all of their schoolwork therapies on the screen. So it's sometimes hard to kind of create that balance. Um, a few other really great questions that have come in. Um, what about for a child who is very low functioning? Could you rank the activities that you might try first? So like, which, where would you start? Um, it's hard to say without knowing the child, but I would stick to activities that the child is successful in already. So if they, um, you want them to feel successful. If they feel frustrated, then they're not going to want to engage in the activity. So I would start with very simple, um, like cause and effect games or, um, like, Sorting activities are great. Puzzles are good. Yeah, I think sorting and puzzles are really great for, um, and, and also like building, you know, really open art projects with shapes, like just some simple gluing with a glue stick, gluing shapes on a piece of paper and making a picture that, um, you know, whatever it is, it's a great picture. And, um, I, the sensory things I also think are really um, engaging. Um, so I know like shaving cream on bubble wrap has, I have a brother with autism and shaving cream on bubble wrap has been a lifesaver for me. Um, so uh, kind of those sensory activities are really engaging and calming. Mm -hmm. Um, another question, um, how can like you incorporate siblings for kind of kids to play with their siblings while doing some of these activities? Any strategies that you have? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the arts activities are really fun for that because um, there's a lot of play involved. And um, so things like building a cardboard city, um, everyone can contribute something to that city. And then there's the opportunity to, to play in, in what you've created. Um, the puppet shows are really great for that because, um, you know, the, e each child can make their own puppet and, um, you know, it can, it can help really engage in like dialogue, um, the forts and then like going on a family camping trip in the fort can be really exciting. Um, those would be my, my suggestions. Andy. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say building forts, making an obstacle course together, um, taking turns. Maybe if you're going to do an obstacle course, you can kind of set limits by saying, okay, we're going to pick four things from this room to use. Um, let's say it's, you know, Joey's gonna do pick two and Annie's gonna pick another two. So kind of like setting the limit, but, but you know, and you're setting the expectation, but you're, you're taking turns and it's a more collaborative that way too. Um, and we also have a parent who, or someone on the call, who kind of gave a suggestion about the technology 
Um, and I kind of agree that if you do want to get a child off of technology, you kind of have to make it worth their while. Um, so offer something more motivating or reinforcing. Um, one thing that we didn't cover that I've been encouraging a lot of clients I work with to do is cooking. Um, and cooking can look very different depending on an individual's age, um, kind of fine motor issues, um, but it could be as simple as getting pizza dough and kind of putting the cheese and sauce on. It could be more complex recipes, uh, but also finding things that kids enjoy eating um, and having them help make it. And there are a lot of um, websites that have more uh, visual recipes to help kids who might have a hard time following just the words. Um, so that's also another kind of activity that could engage the whole family. Any other questions or Oh, someone asked if any recommendations for online games for like four to five year olds. So I guess that's something that we haven't covered because we know that a lot of families are looking for um, activities that are not screen focused. But um, since we have experts here, what apps or websites do you find are educational or are good ways to engage children that might involve screens? Mm -hmm. um, I've been using a lot of the virtual tours. So those resources that you shared, um, you know, going to the zoo and, and talking about the animals or, you know, playing I spy. Um, that's a really great activity. Also highlights, they have I spy worksheets and a bunch of different worksheets that you can access online. Um, four to five is tough. I've been doing more like hands-on activities with my, my younger guys, but those are the two that stick out in my mind right now. Of course, if I think of anything else, I could definitely send it to you if there's going to be a follow-up email, but um, yeah, I would say like at that age, their attention isn't super high. So you don't, you know, something that's very short and easy to navigate. Yeah, it's not a, a game per se, but I know our um, kindergarten students love Go Noodle, as mm -hmm. Michelle mentioned. And it's, um, it's not a game, but it's interactive and there's a lot of movement and um, there's so many different videos on there. Um, so I say Go Noodle is really fun. I mean, I don't do a lot of videos in the arts, but um, I, I love the Go Noodle. <laughs> and I do recommend, so there are a lot of um, apps, especially educational apps that have made themselves free uh, during COVID. Um, and also there are lots of apps that are available through your library. Um, and that is a really good resource to go to for a kind of like online learning opportunities, because even if there's an app that you have to pay for, often if you go through the library route, you can get access to it at no cost. Um, so I think if no one has any more questions, we'll all stay on for a few more minutes um, if anyone has additional questions. Also, if you have any additional ideas for future webinar topics. We come up with our webinars um, from your ideas. Um, so please type in any and all suggestions. The last thing I do want to share is we are doing these webinars, but we also get that sometimes just having the information is not sufficient and that if you are a parent and you feel like you are needing more support, I highly recommend um, Autism Parents Connect. Um, it is $20 per workshop but that is not a barrier. So if that seems like prohibitive, um, you could also just email Andrea, but what she is, she is helping parents feel supported and learn skills. Um, so it is six virtual uh, sessions and it covers various topics. And I cannot speak highly enough of her and Autism Parents Connect. So if you are a parent feeling like you need more support, I highly recommend reaching out to Andrea um, to see when she's gonna be forming her next cohort. Um, so thank you everybody for tuning in. Again, um, the panelists will stay on for a few more minutes if anybody has any last minute questions. 
Um, but hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye.